morning everyone today i'm back to re-curating yes re-curating the wall on Ikat Loseng because um, the last time I had too many pieces and when you have too many pieces of these zigzag patterns you kind of kapala pusing means your head goes spinning now um, I want to go back to my interesting theory that these uh, warp Ikat Loseng Loseng means warp these warp Ikats were introduced to West Kalimantan not um, earlier than the late 18th century. Now we know that many of the West Kalimantan Sultanates only developed since the 17th century. So um, for them to have um, weaving tradition earlier than that is probably um, uh, not possible. So, uh, uh, and the other thing is a lot of these tend to uh, look and feel like uh, somewhere between the 1950s and 60s although some might be slightly earlier pre-war for example this piece is very old it's silk um, it reminds me of actually Uzbekistan warp ikats if you look at it um, vertically this way you know you, it looks like um, one of the chapans that um, we get from Uzbekistan especially the color scheme but uh, back to my theory about uh, it's being uh, influenced by the charms in um, Vietnam and Cambodia uh, is this piece, okay? This is called the boat and wave uh, pattern, a traditional champa design. How do I know that it's a traditional champa design? It's because I checked with Nick Mansur, my friend in Cambodia, I mean in Vietnam uh, from the Cham village of Chao Dak in Anyang province and this is the boat and this is the wave okay and this pattern is this is a new piece but it's copied from his uh, grandfather's sarong and it's a very old pattern now uh, it uses uh, type 2 silk um, type Type 2 silk is the silk that's on the outside of the cocoon it's a rougher silk for men and the finest silk uh, type 1 silk is the inside of the cocoon which is softer, it's used um, for the women in, in Champa. Now, as you can see, this pattern is also in this old um, Kalimantan uh, warp ikat. Uh, then you can see the boat and wave, exactly the same pattern and exactly the same, uh, almost like alternating colors, uh, the same color uh, change concept and also the stripes in the center as the kapala. So this is too much alike to say that there's no, that to say that it's only a coincidence and uh, not um, an influence from each other. So when you look at the map, Cham, Vietnam and uh, Cambodia is directly north of, um, of Borneo. So they must have crossed the seas easily and traded with um, the coastal ports of um, West Kalimantan and uh, the in Pontiana one of the famous designs is the Ikat Los Seng Chorak Insang. Insang is the fish gill so this is um, replicating the zigzag pattern is replicating the fish gills actually it's quite easy to do you just Ikat in batches like this okay and then you put one uh, this string is further up this group of strings and this group of strings further up then when you weave it it becomes the zigzag pattern. So, I won't say the zigzag patterns of Sumatra influenced uh, Kalimantan, although they had connections. Maybe they did, but when one weaves, right, uh, uh, warp e cuts, it's very easy to fall into this pattern. So, they could have done it, uh, created these patterns on their own, but I just put them together to show that they're quite similar, except the ones in Palembang are rather thin and narrow. And these are broader, but um, to have this in three different colors is more rare. Usually in Pontiana, you have them in one color and in Palembang in one color. But um, it's lovely to have this um, different color combinations. And look at the background, it's a, it's a combination of two different uh, colored threads. And you can see the batches of um, ikatat bands that are 
one above the other, creating this zigzag pattern. And then this V-shaped pattern here, um, you can see also in Palembang, this purple one, and then in Pontianak. And the interesting one is this. Now, in Champa, there are many of these uh, e-cuts with exactly the same pattern and color scheme. Uh, dark, uh, darker green on a light green background. Uh, I found a few and have pictures of Vietnamese refugees in Thailand wearing these exact sarongs. Um, Vietnamese Cham refugees. Uh, they are people from Champa who escaped to uh, Thailand uh, during the war and they were wearing exactly these. So obviously they must have influenced um, Pontianak during the period of um, a trade uh, in the 19th century. Now, when you look at this, um, an interesting uh, feature um, that I didn't notice when I bought this in Pontiana is this. Look at this. There is a label. My God. Oh, Mulana. Uh, quality, fine quality, trademark, registered and made in India, my God, India, can you imagine? So you can see the Southeast Asian or the Malay world market was quite amazing in that it commanded the attention of the world. Uh, Europe, uh, Switzerland um, um, were making these uh, imitation uh, batiks as well as uh, in Holland, all for the Malay market. And um, you can see now even e-cuts they made for the Malay market. So the demand must have been great enough to, uh, to entice foreigners to compete for the Malay market. And this is one example. So you can see it's a charm influence on West Kalimantan in areas like Pontianak and then uh, influencing people from overseas to copy what they liked and in, uh, exported it to uh, in the Malay world. So this is the story I have to tell with my Ikat Los Angs. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something from it. Uh, as you know, these are all my conjectures and assumptions um, based on what I know and interviews with local people and uh, people of the region. Uh, it might lead to something. It's not, I won't say it's a, it's a scholarly um, 